Hello everybody, my name is Jeff Bees and I'm here to talk to you about the PID Control Lab for ME4031W. So here's a list of objectives that uh, we're going to go through over the course of this video, starting out with an experimental setup, moving into the procedure, and then finally uh, the deliverables that we expect for this experiment. So we'll start out with the experimental setup. Here's what you'll see when you get into the lab. And here is a cleaned up version of that through an electronic schematic. This experiment follows a closed loop PID control system, as we can see up to the top right here. And the numbers here indicate the order in which the pattern operates, and they are shown also in the experimental setup, where we see number one starts with the copper plate, which the thermocouple in part two takes the temperature measurement of the copper plate, sends it through the thermocouple specific DAC for measuring the temperature, which then sends the information into the computer, and LabVIEW will then take the temperature measured and compare it to a set point defined by the program, and from there it will generate a voltage and current output um, based upon the PID controls, which will be transmitted to the 6009 DAC, and the output of the DAC will then control the power supply, which will take a 0 to 4 voltage and ramp it up to a 0 to 30 watt signal. This signal will be then sent into a resistive heater located below the copper plate and will then heat up the copper plate and then the cycle repeats again with a temperature measurement to see where the copper plate is at at that specific time. Meanwhile, we have a rotometer over here connected with a supply line and you can adjust the flow rate um, which will send air going through this flow channel passing over the copper plate and therefore cooling it down before exiting. Some quick notes about this setup is that the arrows indicate the direction of information flow or current. TC represents the thermocouple and the heating element is underneath the copper plate. The first piece of equipment that I want to cover in this setup is the control and data acquisition systems. In this experiment, you will actually be using two different DACs. Uh, the first one, the 6009, which you should be familiar with, uh, acts as the control. The DAC will actually output five different wires of information to the power supply, which will then operate that power supply. And those items include uh, 5 volt activation, a ground reference, an on and off switch, and a voltage and current control. Now the lab view simplifies the calculations by setting the current to a constant 1 amp. Meanwhile, the voltage is what is varied using the PID control system. And therefore, the 0 to 4 volt signal corresponds to a 0 to 4 watt output. Meanwhile, the TCO1 DAC is a thermocouple specific DAC connected to a K type thermocouple. And the reason why we have a thermocouple specific DAC is because it includes an internal reference, which means that you do not need an ice bath. As far as the heating system goes, we want to start out talking about the power supply, which we can see up here in the top right corner with a front view and a rear view. Now, in the back, there is a spot for selecting the mode. Typically, the power supply is set to normal mode, which means that you can operate it from the front. However, in this case, we will actually want to uh, switch this over to remote control. That will allow the DAC to send in the control operations um, through this remote control port. And then once the power supply receives this information, it will send out a positive and negative voltage through the main output in the back. Now an important note for the power output is that it goes from 0 to 30 watts. Meanwhile, the 6009 DAC only goes from 0 to 4 watts. And therefore, there is a 7.5 times multiplication factor between the PID controls that you plug into the LabVIEW program and what is actually being used in your physical system. The output of the power supply will then lead into a resistive heating element, which is located at the 
bottom side of the copper plate. And an important note about the heating system is that the program is set to stop the heating process when you click the stop button. And so it is very important that after you're done running the trial, you do press this stop button uh, to prevent the system from overheating. Now to cool this system, we will use compressed air, which you will want to make sure is in the on position, which means that it is running parallel to the pipe. And this will lead to a pressure regulator, which you'll want to make sure is set to 80 PSI. From the pressure regulator, the air will be sent through the rotameter, which you can set to 300 standard cubic feet per hour during the trial. And then while you're cooling down the copper plate, you'll set it to 400 SCFH. From there, the air will flow through the flow channel and cool the copper plate. Now some important notes about this is that since we're dealing with compressed air, you'll want to check the connections before you apply any pressure. A loose connection could pop off and uh, could potentially hurt somebody and so you want to make sure those connections are secured. Another important note about this is that the rotameter is set to go only to 400 standard cubic feet per hour and so do not try to open the knob beyond that point as the knob could pop off from being unscrewed too much. Now we'll move on to the procedure for the given trials as well as the PID controller design. To the right here I have a video that will walk through the lab view portion of the experiment and I will run it while I discuss the procedure. So first you want to go to the lab 3 folder and open up the PID control application and it, the VI will pop up and you'll notice that there is both a thermocouple device and a USB 6009 device and they are both labeled with a different device name and so we want to figure out which one's which and we can go to the NI device monitor down in the top or bottom right and you can get the device names from there and then you just select those devices and since the thermocouple device was device 4 the other one's just the other one then you'll want to select a file path which you can make a copy of a CSV file and you'll want to start out labeling it as ambient temperature and this is just to get a baseline of what the temperature is through the supplier and then you'll want to run it with the KP, KI, and KD values set to zero and run it for about 30 seconds and press stop then you'll want to select the next file which will be the first trial that you'll run and in this case I'll do trial 5 since you'll be given uh, four trials and a good procedure is to label what the PID control is in this case it's only a KP equal to 0 0.3 the other two are set to 0 and so we'll plug that in and press run and we'll want to run this until a steady state is reached and make sure that you absolutely spend at least enough time doing this uh, to reach steady state because if you cut off prematurely your calculations will not work right. Once you've ensured that you can press stop and now you want to run a cooldown file. And when you run this cooldown make sure you change the rotometer from 300 standard cubic feet per hour during your trial to 400 standard cubic feet per hour because this will allow you to cool down your system faster. Now this cooldown information is not important for your data analysis. It is merely used to monitor the temperature as it drops down to ambient. And so I'm going to speed through this a little bit, but it takes a long time. And as you can see, you're going to spend a decent amount of time watching the temperature cool down, and this can be very valuable time used for analyzing your data. And if you do this properly, uh, you should have a large portion of your analysis done before you leave the lab. So once you've reached ambient temperature, you'll want to select the next trial in your list and repeat the same procedure that I just outlined for item 4. As far as trials go, you'll want to start out with a T ambient measurement for roughly 30 seconds, and that is just done by setting all the PID controls to zero. Then you'll want to run the trials 
that are given in the lab manual that we do not provide data for, and then you will go into the controller design trials. So before lab, you will want to determine which controls you'll want to use to achieve a target set out by the lab manual. And that target is given here with maximum values for steady state error, percent overshoot, rise time, and settling time. And in order to figure these out, you'll want to do an algebraic solution starting from the PID control system where U is equal to the Q heater. And you will perform an energy balance with Q heater, the convective cooling, and the energy stored within the plate. And from here you will be able to uh, first take a derivative to remove the integral term and then rearrange this and simplify in order to get something similar to this form where omega n and zeta corresponding to the natural frequency and the dampening factor will be given in terms of the PID controls. From there you can impose the terms for zeta and omega n into the equations for percent overshoot, rise time, and settling time in order to make sure that you are reaching the targets given here. Now an important note about this is that the equations for rise time and settling time are actually fit functions uh, based upon the trends that have been empirically determined and therefore they only are valid within a certain region of dampening factors that you can find in the lab manual. When you get into lab, make sure you check with your TA what controls you plan to use uh, before you do impose them, just to save time and make sure that you're on the right track. And then you can go through and test out your first controller design. Now if your algebraically determined control does not succeed, uh, then you'll want to enter an iterative process where you will adjust your control based upon first the trends that you've determined from earlier trials as well as the expected trends found in table one of the lab manual. If this does not work and you're running out of time, you can uh, use the Ziegler-Nichols method as a backup. And so this involves operating the PID control system where KU corresponds to the KP you plugged in from your previous control system and TU refers to the period of oscillation within your temperature versus time profile. Now we'll talk about some of the deliverables we expect from this lab. So a significant portion of your results will be focused in on trials 1 through 7, which correspond to controls that only use the proportional control and not the integral or derivative control. And so the first thing that you'll want to include is error fraction versus time plots. And from those plots, you'll be able to determine the experimental time constant, which you can compare to the theoretical time constant. Once you've established all of these time constant values, you will then want to plot the time constant versus your KP control. And then another thing you'll want to examine is the steady state error versus the KP control. Now an important note about these trials is that while the proportional control only condition should be considered a first order system theoretically, that assumption is not completely true due to the digital nature of the control, which incorporates a, an error that can be understood using Taylor series expansion, where high KP values will then deviate from a first order system despite not theoretically being a second order system. The second part of your results will be a summary table of all of your trials. For each trial you want to include the PID controls used, the steady state error, rise time, settling time, percent overshoot, and the time constant. Some notes about these results is that you want to be strategic about making your plots. Each of these plots can be made into a linear form which will prove to be more insightful than if you simply plot error fraction versus time or time constant versus KP or steady state error versus KP. So you'll want to take a moment to think about how you can make these plots linear by manipulating the algebraic equations that govern them. Also it is important to remember that the PID controls that are being operated on your copper plate are actually seven and a half times greater than the numerical values that you plugged into LabVIEW. And therefore whenever you're plotting the result, use the seven and a half times larger value 
uh, rather than the smaller values you, you plugged in, because that corresponds to the actual phenomena that you are evaluating. And the last thing to note about this is that the summary table asks for a lot of variables that will not necessarily be present for an individual control. For example, the time constant is only valid for a first order system, and therefore the full PID controls should not have a value given. That is all I have for you, so I hope that this has been helpful and that you have a wonderful day.